So, um, schedule wise, it looks like we've got a quiz this Friday. That's the 30th of April, the last day of April. Uh, that's on sections one, two, and three from chapter six. And from for the rest of the year, we've got two sets of assignments due. So on Monday, six, four, five, and six are due. That's the homework. Next Friday, we've got a quiz on those three sections. The following Monday, May the 10th, we have two homeworks due on seven, one, and seven, two. And that, that that Tuesday, the 11th of May, is the last official day of classes, and finals officially begin the 12th. Uh, I don't have a specific date for you for the finals yet. I need to confer with uh, the rest of the pre-calc teachers so that we can sort of align when we're all doing the, the, the final together. We do not have the same final exam. Uh, in pre-calc this, we don't have a departmental exam. So I'll be writing the final, and other professors will be writing their finals. Um, but we, we like to try and align them um, to some extent, like with, to, to work best with scheduling, if you will. Um, not that that makes a huge difference now that we're all online. <laughs> um, but it's, it's just something that we used to do, and we still do. So I will get back to you on that uh, probably next week. Additionally, next week, I'll be putting out a practice final exam for you, uh, a paper copy or a digital copy on Blackboard. Um, and just like with the, uh, with the tests, I'll be uploading solution videos to that practice exam. Um, and I'll, I'll sort of make little videos of solutions of one question at a time or several questions at a time. And I'll post those all to the playlist as well. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions leading into the final, just shoot me a question, shoot me an email, or ask me in, in this class or the next class, which is our last. And um, and uh, or during office hours, right? Okay. Um, so if there are no questions about the final exam. It'll be structured just like the other tests. So there'll be a section of true false, there'll be a section of short answer. Okay. Um, if there are no other questions, I can go ahead and move on. Okay, let me scroll scroll through here. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get started then. So today we are talking about problems from sections 6.4, 5, and 6. Uh, 6.4 is, you, you know, it's it's essentially uh, it's essentially a repeat of a previous section back in chapter five. So if you've watched the lecture, um, I did not do much in it. Um, I evaluated a few prob, I did a few problems. Um, and that's it. Um, so I, I'm really not planning on doing many problems from it. So we'll just we'll pick one out here, um, something that something that might be a uh, yeah I don't I don't know maybe maybe something interesting. Um, there's an awful lot of these happening. Uh, SpaceX launching their space shuttle. So how about we do this problem? This is problem 41 from the text. And it has this description. So there's a space shuttle launching. So I'll draw a nice little picture here. Try my best to draw a nice cool space shuttle. And so it's launching up. And it is some height h off the ground 
which is not necessarily something that you can measure easily, right? Uh, <laughs> once it goes, there's no tape measure you can attach to it. You know, that you could reasonably read at any moment in time. And you, because you're a, a, a wonderful student who is thinking about things like this beforehand, you decided, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna park my car and watch from right over here. Exactly two miles away from the launch site. Okay, so you're not watching the stream on YouTube of this launch. You're watching it in person. And what you do is you you essentially are watching this thing on a tripod and at one point in time you're, you're like okay I'm gonna stop moving my my telescope or my sorry my spotting scope on the tripod I'm gonna fix it at some position and I'm gonna measure this angle and the reason you're doing that you know you'll sort of stop on the on the spotting scope and you'll you'll watch it with your eyes from there on um, the reason is you want to know at that particular time how high up it is so it it's not it's not too difficult to solve this problem um, but the question is is just what is the height of the space shuttle in terms of this angle theta so this is a very good introductory problem to, to break it in for you what is it Or what are some assumptions we need to make in order to say what this height h is? There's a couple different ways you could go about this problem, but a couple different things you could say. What do you think? Is there a question that you have about this situation that needs to be answered so that you can give me a good answer? Or is, uh, is there sufficient information to tell me um, what the height is? If so, what is the height? So one of the questions that I have, you know, I've watched quite a few of these things, uh, is, 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 do we even have a real triangle here? You know, when rockets sort of launch, they, they definitely sort of arc in the air. So this side over here, I, I don't know if it would necessarily be straight. It wouldn't be like this accentuated. But it, it probably wouldn't be straight. Is that a big problem? If I'm trying to find the height? No one? Yeah, we do need to use tangent. Mm -hmm. 
And what is tangent going to tell us? Tangent of that angle is going to tell us... It's going to tell us what? H over 2. Very good. And this sort of gets at my my question. It's going to tell us h over 2, but is that the real height of the rocket? Well, that depends on this, right? How much has it curved? Because if it's curved, then its real height is actually this dotted line's length, not this length. But you measure the distance over to this base point, not this base point. And if it curved away from you, the situation is, is similar. The point is just to say, you know, in, in the real problem, not this fictitious pre-calculus problem, it's a little more complicated. And, uh, and we're only really providing here an estimation of the height. So the height uh, is just solving this. The estimation of our height is just twice the tangent of that angle. And that is a measurement in miles. Okay. This is kind of the theme of uh, section 6.4, 5, and 6. It's, um, you know, from an engineering perspective or from a uh, measuring perspective, It's like trying to measure impossible things like this height. Like I said, you can't attach a tape measure to this rocket ship while it launches and just read off the height at any point in time. The, the theme here is kind of like measuring these impossible things uh, by measuring alternative things and measuring only so much as you need. You know, not measuring a bunch of extra things just measuring the smallest number of things. Okay, very good. So if I told you that angle, then you could easily calculate the height or give an estimate. All right, very good. So let's move on. We're going to 6.5 next. 6.4 was just uh, definitions of triangles. So I've got a poll to start this one off. find it here. All right, there you go. You should see the poll question in front of you now. And I'll talk at you while you throw your answers in. So I think in this one, you should be able to choose multiple options. I hope that's the case, but so 6.5 was about something called the law of signs. And the law of signs gave us a relationship between sides of a triangle and angles in a triangle. So I used lowercase letters to represent lengths of side lengths, or lengths of sides, and uppercase to measure the uh, angles of the triangle. And I always use the same letter for opposite sides and angles. Okay, The law of sines says that if I take the sines of the angles, and divide those by their corresponding opposite side lengths, then it turns out that all of these ratios are equal. That's kind of, to me, an interesting result. Um, it doesn't seem obvious at all right away.
But one thing it lets us do is boil down that necessary set of information, that minimal set of information. So if you are, I see nobody has responded with the last one yet, so that, that's good. <laughs> and there's just one person left to respond. So I'll give you about 45 seconds to throw your hat in. So there's this question of what is enough to know uh, everything in the triangle. If I know all three angles, so A, 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 can I then determine all the side lengths too? Or what if I know an angle and then a side and then another angle in that order? So the side is between two angles that I know. Is that enough information to solve everything else? So this law of signs is, is one of these tools which, let, which lets us, for any triangle, whether it's a right triangle or not, uh, it lets us try and solve the triangle with some, some smaller set of information. Okay. So most people said angle side angle is a minimal set of information. So here we go. Angle, side, angle. So here's, here's a triangle for us. So this is problem number nine. We have angle A here is 46 degrees. We have angle B here is 20 degrees. And we know the side length in between them, 65 units. So this would be an angle, side, angle situation. This is again problem nine. So we suggest that we can solve it. So how do we solve it? So here we go. The law of sines would say that if we take the sine of 46, we divide that by this unknown length A. That's going to be equal to these other ratios. Which ratio is the best one? Well, we're gonna have to figure this triangle or this angle out first. And so this is something that I used in the lecture, but uh, it isn't something I, I don't think that they necessarily outright say in this section. But if you take all the three triangles angles and add them together, so long as that is a planar triangle, so it's drawn on a flat surface or a flat surface which has just one bend. So if, if you can see my video, so if I take this sheet of paper and I bend it like this, Okay, or if I bend it like this, the angles sum still is 180. But I'll take my glasses case for example. If you have something similar like similar to this, if you were to place that triangle on a, a surface like this, which has both curves in both directions, you see that's kind of like a kind of like the cap of a sphere. It turns out that the some of your angles is going to be more than 180. Um, and I don't have a hyperbolic surface with me here. Um, maybe I do. This is a poor example. This is, this is a bookend. It's a little owl. Um, but if you look at like right here near his feet, uh, you look at that surface, you think, well, in this direction, it kind of does one of these guys, you know, it's like a parabola upwards, but in the other direction, mm -hmm. it goes, a, it goes downwards as a parabola. If you were to place a triangle sort of right in here and measure its angles, they would sum to less than 180 degrees. So we've got surfaces with these positive curvatures and negative curvatures and zero curvatures, uh, which affect the sums of interior angles. Anyway, this is a flat surface. So what is the angle in here? Well, that's 180 
minus 46, minus 20. And if you do that math, it's got to be something like 114. Right? 180 minus 60 is 120, minus 6 is 114. So we'll take the sine of 114, and we'll divide it by the opposite side. And do you see what that gives us? If we solve this for A, we can easily determine its length. Right? So, um, on your test, this is the sort of answer that I am looking for. I am looking for this. I'm looking for uh, A equals 65 times sine of 46 over sine of 114. That's all I'm looking for. And why is that all I'm looking for? Because I don't want you using calculators for this. Okay, you can use a calculator to give me the approximate value. That's fine. What I really want to see is just is just this. Okay, because the whole the idea is we're not using calculators in this course, so this is sufficient. Okay, um, WebAssign sometimes asks you asks you to give um, estimations, and so it says round to the nearest tenth or hundredth. So go ahead and use a calculator for that. Okay. Um, we can also do the same for side B. Okay, so we use the law of sines to say sine of 20 over B equals, and now we can use either pair. So we can use 114 and 65 again, which is what I'll use. Or we could have used uh, the uh, sine of 46 divided by A. Okay. All right. So that's that's a good solution. If we have a triangle in angle side angle, we can definitely solve it. And this is how you do it. You can use the law of sines. I see someone in the chat put something for side angle side. Inverse sine function gives answers less than 90, even for angles greater than 90. Um, so let's take a look at one. So we're looking for side angle side. As opposed to making one up, I'm trying to find one from your book. Um, all right, so this would this would be probably in the law of cosines section which is the next one. So I'll look there. So here's here's a good one. This is this is actually not from section 6.5. It's from the next one, 6.6, .6, which is on our docket. Um, so we'll we'll go there. So 6.6. This is question 27. Okay, so notice in the poll question I didn't ask uh, law of sines. You know, it's not solvable using the law of sines. I just asked solvable. Right, for which of these can we solve? Um, so here's a great example, side angle side. Jay suggests there might be an issue with this. And so let's take a look at it. 48, 30 degrees, 38. So there's our side angle side and we do not know this length uh, and the way I drew this makes you probably think that it's a right triangle so let me get rid of that I don't want you thinking that There we go. 
Okay, so we don't know x, the side length. We don't know either of these angles either. So let's see if we can solve this triangle. Um, and so J, you say the inverse sine gives answers less than 90. Even, yes. Okay, now I understand your question. Okay, so let me, um, Let me explain Jay's question here um, using this problem, and then uh, and I'll and I'll show you. Uh, I don't know that I can show you here with this, but I'll show you on a what a calculator does uh, when the time comes. Okay, so so to solve this one, we could try to use the law of sines. Um, the problem with that is we don't necessarily know these angles. So we don't know both pairs is what I mean. We don't know both an angle and its opposite side length. So for every one of these ratios, there's at least one, un one unknown, which means if we try to use this, we're going to have uh, three unknowns. So they don't help. Which brings us to 6.6 .6 and the law of cosines, which essentially is the Pythagorean theorem for any triangle. Right? It's not specific to um, right triangles. It's uh, it's for any triangle. And it says this, so I'll just I'll, I'll write it in terms of the triangle up above here. It says if you take any one of the side lengths, square it, that's going to be equal to the square of the other side lengths with a small adjustment. And that adjustment is going to be this. It's twice the product of the opposite side length or the other side lengths times the cosine of the angle opposite the side you chose to begin with. Okay, so this as it stands without this adjustment here, that's the Pythagorean theorem. And that requires that angle A is 90 degrees. But if A is not 90 degrees, then we just have to adjust this, right? And I think that I think that makes some good sense, right? In terms of what cosine is, if A uh, if A becomes acute or if it grows obtusely, then this is either shrinking side A or it is increasing side A, right? Cosine of a, an acute angle is a positive. So we're subtracting something off here. Cosine of a obtuse angle, bigger than 90, that's a negative value. And so this turns into a sum. And so we have an increase of a side A. But this is what I what I like to say is the Pythagorean theorem on, on steroids. It's uh it's uh it's really really powerful theorem. Again, it only works for planar triangles. So if you've got a triangle on a curved surface, you're out of luck. You can't use this one. You gotta, you've got to use either uh, spherical or, um, or hyperbolic geometry for that. This is planar geometry. So let's use it in this problem. So we, we want to find x, right? So we say x squared equals the squares the others added up. So 48 squared plus 38 squared minus twice 48 times 38 times cosine of the angle opposite of the side. So cosine of 30 degrees. So what would you do on a test? <laughs> if I asked you to solve for x, this is what you would give me. Okay, this is exactly on your test that's all I would want you to write out. There is x. It's whatever this turns into. That is sufficient. On WebAssign and right now, I'm actually going to compute this out uh, because we are interested in finding these other angles. So 48 squared is 2,304. 38 squared is 1,444 minus 
2 times 48 times 38 is 3,648. And then cosine of 30 degrees is everybody's favorite ratio, square root 3 over 2. Okay, so now we could multiply all of this stuff out and have our solution. And I do this in, in various steps. So this is uh, 3159.3 or so. It keeps going. So overall, I'm not writing this stuff in. It equals 588. Point seven ish. There's more decimals. So that is x squared. And then we'll just square root that. To give us our approximation of that side length, which is 24. So I'm going to write approximately 24.3. Okay. So this is a good example of using the law of cosines to find uh, either a side length or some angle. In, in this case, it's side length. OK, so from there, let's try and find this angle, because that's going to uh, that's gonna illustrate what Jay was talking about. So let's try and find side, or sorry, angle A. Okay, so angle A uh, we're gonna use uh, we're gonna use this here. We know the sine of A divided by forty eight, that's the opposite side length has got to be equal to another ratio. So let's do sine of 30 divided by 24.3. So that's 30 and its opposite length. That's the length we've just found. Is this side, side, angle? No, this is side, angle, side. This is S, A, S. Right, so this, actually this is a good, uh, a good question. Uh, in the poll, I, I just asked, can you solve this triangle? Um, the answer is yes, we can. Using both the law of cosines and the law of sines, as we're seeing here, can you solve it with just the law of sines? The answer is no. OK, so that's another question. Uh, this side angle side's not sufficient. Uh, I, I don't think it's sufficient for the law of sines off the top of my head. might be. Uh, we could form three equations with three unknowns. So it, yeah, it actually, I think it would be sufficient. <laughs> I use the law of cosines. Uh, that's fine as well. OK, so let's see if we can figure this out. Um, what we would need to do is take the sine inverse to find a of 48 times 24.3 um, notice that this is this is slightly bigger or slightly uh, yes yeah, slightly less than 2 okay that's important because the sine of 30 that's 1 half so this is multiplied by 1 half so if we solve this for sine of a we get sine of a equals 48 divided by 24.3 times sine 30. If we take the sine inverse, what do we get? We get this in here, which is our angle A. 
So on a test, this would be sufficient. This is this is angle A. That's all you would need to, to write down for your answer. Right now, we'll go ahead and we'll try and figure this out. And this illustrates Jay's question or his statement. Um, in fact, this is for any angle or for any for any inverse problem, Jay. Um, if you take the inverse on a calculator, it will never give you an angle outside the normal range uh, for what we for our inverse functions and what they're defined to be. So for sine inverse, a calculator is never going to give you an angle outside of negative 90 to 90 degrees. It just won't, even if the angle in question is supposed to be obtuse. Okay, that's the that's the case we have right here. If you think about the side lengths uh, of this triangle. A should be bigger than 90. Okay. So this angle, which we'll see here, I'll, I'm going to plug this right into my calculator. Uh, 24 divided by 24.3. Okay, that's 0.987. If I then take sine inverse of that, what does it give me? It gives me an angle of 89.98. So I'm going to go 89.99 degrees. Okay, that's that's not what the angle should be. I don't think. I think it should be at the obtuse angle. So what is the obtuse angle? So this this boils down to this situation. I'm going to accentuate this a little bit so it's not quite as big as it should be. So this is angle A, the one that the calculator gave us. And it has a specific sine value. What is that sine value? Well, it's exactly this. Well, that was 0.98. So the height here, the x, I don't know. The y is 0.98. So this is the angle the calculator gave us, but what angle do we think we need? We think we need this one, actually. But it has the exact same height as the other one. So the calculator will only give you fun uh, uh, the, uh, the angles in between negative 90 and 90 degrees. Okay, so you need to use a little bit more of reasoning to determine is this, you know, which angle is it? Okay. All right. Are there any questions about that? I know that can get confusing. No questions. Um, is the law of, is this stuff is this stuff uh, rather easy for you? Is this stuff uh, making sense in general? Have you worked on the homework and it's it's fine? Or is I haven't even I haven't asked once. I've asked a question, but I didn't get much response earlier. Is this stuff okay? Aside from these poll answers here, I, I don't have much feedback from anyone today. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, I'll share these results again. So in this angle side angle, we've just discovered, hey, we can we can definitely solve it there. Okay, we can definitely find every side length and every angle in this case. We've just we've just demonstrated how we can start doing that.
Um, in this angle, angle, angle case, it's impossible to solve it. Okay, so for those of you that answered um, angle, 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 let me just illustrate that. Um, So if I gave you some triangle and I told you no information about its lengths, I just said, you know, this, you know, this is 30, you know, this is 70, and this is 80. Uh, could you tell me the side lengths? Sarah, that's fine. Yep. And good luck. I'm getting mine. Uh, I'm getting my second dose of the vaccine, everybody. I was messaged privately uh, about something. I am getting my second dose on Monday next week. So I don't know if any of you have, have had experience with it yet, but uh, good luck to the student that just messaged me. I hope it goes well. Thank you for, for doing your part. Okay, so we've got this triangle here. If I give you all three triangles, could you tell me all this, all the angles? Could you tell me the side lengths? And the, the answer is no, you can't. Because I could take this triangle and I could expand it, keeping all of the angles exactly the same. I could multiply every side length by something. Right, we call that, we call that expansion a dilation. It's a, it's a transformation of this thing um, I can just make it as big as I want and the angles could remain all the same. So angle, angle, angle is not a situation for a triangle uh, where you can solve it, where you can find every angle and every length that is missing. But as we just saw, if I change this to, to say, hey, you know, this side length and you know two angles around it, you can solve that. Okay, so the next question is, I see only four of us said that we can solve this one. What about this one? What if I know this length? Can I determine the other two side lengths and this other third angle? And the answer there is, yes, you can. So for the, for the unbelievers out there, for the 10 of you who didn't respond with this one, Let's do one. Uh, and you can think about this, I guess, just conceptually first. Um, I think we'll focus on this angle, and then we'll, we'll think about these two sides. So let's say we fix this. This is like 10 feet or something. OK, so this, this side length is like some fixed value. That cannot change no matter what. Additionally, this angle and this angle are fixed. We cannot change those. So if that's the case, we definitely know that what this angle is. As I've said, angles in the plane, in a triangle, add up to 180. So this has to be 70 degrees. So that angle is fixed. And it's determined from the other two. 80 plus 30 is 100 and, and uh, did I did I do some mis <laughs> did I do some bad math earlier? Let me make some. No, we're good. That's 110 plus 70. That's 180 degrees. So that's how we determine this 70 from the other two known angles. So now, can we find these side lengths? Uh, or is it impossible because there's possibly multiple side lengths that we could have? So think about what would happen if I tried to do something like this. Uh, let's see if I can do this in Zoom. Okay, so I'm trying to change, oh, I can't do that. Let me slide these down first and then I can select them together. Here we go. We're working the situation. All right. All right. We're getting around it. So here's 
our triangle. If I if I try and adjust those two side lengths by making them shorter, notice what happens. If I if I keep this 30 degree angle the same, this 80 degree angle the same, and this 70 degree angle the same, just by adjusting these two side lengths and sliding the whole thing over, notice that A must change. Additionally, if I don't slide it over, but if I just shorten these guys, so I try to keep A the same, and I try and slide those over, well then we've got a different problem altogether. Our angles have changed. So Jay asks, what are we trying to calculate here? Well, I'm, I'm trying to ask the question is, is there a triangle, is there one triangle that exists that satisfies these three fixed values? These two angles and this side length. That's what it means to solve a triangle is to find the measurements that give you uh, a triangle. So find, find this, find this, and find whatever this angle was. So in this situation, we definitely were able to calculate this angle. And as I've just sort of illustrated, there will be a side length x and a side length y that we can solve. In the previous example of angle, 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 there wasn't a single triangle that we could solve for, right? I, expl I showed how we could expand the triangle out, out, keeping all the angles the same. Or we could compress the triangle down, keeping all the angles the same. There wasn't a single triangle that we could solve for. So in this case, there is. Uh, and so we can go about doing that. Uh, and the reason I'm, I'm, I'm trying to start at this sort of conceptual level is because quite a few of us did not think we could solve a triangle like this. So there's some, some of us are, are not understanding what it means to solve the triangle or, uh, uh, or they're not seeing how we can solve using uh, cosine laws or sine laws. Um, so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to illustrate and trying to explain what it means to solve. And now we'll get into how you can solve this. Okay, so, so here's our problem. We've got this triangle. This is an angle, angle, side triangle. Uh, so to solve a problem like this, that we've got this really nice thing going on here with uh, 30 degrees being opposite a side that we know. That's great because that's that's what the law of sines is all about. So let's look at sine of 30 over 10. Right, that that's just a number we can compute. Sine of 30 is root 3 over 2 divided by 10. That gives us root 3 over 20. Like that's that's golden. Okay, that's that's a number our calculator can just spit back out at us. So the law of sines would also tell us this, because we, we know this is an 80 degree angle. It would tell us, hey, if, if I can take this sine of 80 degrees and divide it by whatever this is, I'll, I'll just call it B. Well, that's gonna be equal to that number that we just took and found there. Can you solve this? Absolutely, you can solve that. So B equals sine 80 times 20, all divided by root three. All right, I'm just solving this equation right here. So that's what B is. My calculator is going to tell me what sine 80 is. And I can multiply that by 20, and I can divide that by root 3 using a calculator as well. For a test, this is all you need to supply. Okay, you're not actually going to be evaluating that. So that's perfectly fine there. 
Okay. Now we've got B. We've got two side lengths now. We know two angles. Can we solve and find the length and the measurement of that angle for this triangle? Well, I've already explained how we can find this and that it's 70. Again, the interior sum of angles uh, in this triangle, in, in any planar triangle, is 180 degrees. So that's how I know this is 70. 70 plus 30 is 100, plus 80 is 180. So next, what we can do is use the law of sines using this angle and that side, which I'll call C, and we'll have, we'll have another solution for that. So we have sine of 70, which off the top of my head, I don't know, divided by our side length, C, is equal to, and now you just got to pick. Um, you can either pick this angle and use A, or you can pick a, this angle 80 and, and use B, because now we know both A and B, so it doesn't matter. Um, I'll use the sine of 30, because I know that off the top of my head. divided by 10. So this we already determined over here was root 3 over 20. So we solve this now for C and we know that C, sorry I'll erase this box down here, we know that C is equal to sine of 70 times 20 divided by root 3. And there you have it. So we've solved, we've found that single triangle or the small set of triangles, which could give us these values. Okay, so, so hopefully that explains now to everybody, the 10 of you that didn't think we could solve this. Um, you can. Yeah, you definitely can. Okay, so the next there were no other big ones. Um, most people did say you you can or can't solve the side side angle case. That's the that's the uncertain case actually. Um, that's the biggest problem case. Side angle side. Uh, that one is that one's pretty fixed. That one's a definite yes you can solve it. And side 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 is a definite yes you can solve it. And and that's the one I want to just to illustrate real quick because um, this one this one will make I hope some good intuitive sense if we see it okay so if you take three side lengths okay so we'll have a, a small one a really big one and then and then one that just sort of matches up here Does this correspond, if we fix all these three lengths, does this, does this correspond to one triangle and one triangle only? Or does this correspond to possibly different triangles? Is it possible to like move these side lengths or these sides around to give us different angles on the inside? So we keep all the lengths the same but we, we move this, the sides around to get a triangle of a different kind of shape, right? The angles are different, not the side lengths, just the angles. Is it possible to do that? Or is it the case that once we've decided what these three side lengths are, that there's no way of moving them around to create a different, a differently shaped, a differently angle set in the triangle. Well, it turns out it is definitely the case um, it is definitely the case that once you determine what these are, so let's let's say this is like a hundred and let's say that this is like uh, I don't know 90 and what is this one? I'm not, I'm not even going to guess at what this is. I'm going to say this is the square root of 100 squared plus 90 squared. 
uh, minus twice 100 times 90, and I know this probably seems like cheating, it is, uh, times cosine of whatever this angle happens to be. Okay, once we fix this side length at whatever that value is for a specific angle A, there is no way for us to sort of change the shape of this triangle. The angles are also all fixed. So you can think about it also from this law of cosines perspective. If you change this angle A, what happens to this side? Well, cosine of A changes if you change angle A, which means this side length changes. So by fixing this side length, angle A becomes fixed in this situation. And if angle A is fixed, then by the law of sines, we have a side angle side situation. We can solve this triangle. Okay. All right. I'm going to throw a pulse check out there. Let's see. And while this is running, are there any questions? Do you do you have a specific problem that you want me to go through? We've got enough time for one, maybe two more problems. So while this is running, do you have a specific problem you want to see? It could be something from the homework. That is totally fine. And as I'm seeing solutions come in, I just explained the side, side, side situation, right? So which situation leads to possibly multiple solutions when solving a triangle? What I mean there, because there must be some confusion, is what I mean is there's possibly multiple triangles that can be found. So if you know the three side lengths, is there, are there multiple triangles with different angles that have those three side lengths? I just explained that that, that is impossible. If you fix all three side lengths, you definitely only have one, one triangle. And those of you that are answering this question is more difficult than getting a four-year-old to eat vegetables. I sympathize with you. Yeah. So I don't see anyone in the chat or no one speaking up. Uh, so there's, are there, um, are there any problems that you want me to do for you or do with you? Again, that, that could be a homework problem. They could be a, a, a problem from the text you saw or something that you're having difficulty with. Otherwise I know what I will do and it's going to be in response to this. But this is your chance to choose if you've got a, an outstanding question. Okay, well, I'll answer that question uh, while we're throwing our final answers in there. Some people still have not responded. Um, how many upcoming exams do we have? Uh, quizzes. You've got one this week, and you've got one next week. And the week after is finals week. So there's two quizzes left. Um, there are no more chapter tests like what we've had. We had chapter tests uh, one and two. That was one test. Then we had a chapter three to five test which I'm grading today and tomorrow. So there's there's been two tests. We have no more tests. So that so we don't we will not be I will not be testing you separately over chapters 6 and 7. Okay? 
We do have a final exam. There's just one of those. And that is during finals week. Um, the dates elude me. I think the 12th through the 15th. Yeah, it's the 12th through the 15th. And, and I don't have the dates nailed down. I need to talk to the other pre-calculus teachers about that. So you have one more final exam, which is cumulative over every chapter, one through seven. Um, we have no more chapter tests. And we have two more quizzes. And I think there are two more sections of homework that we're doing, six, four, six, five, six, six and 7, 1, and 7, 2. Okay, uh, it's been almost five minutes. I don't think the people that haven't responded are, are going to respond. All right, so which, which situation leads to possibly multiple solutions when solving a triangle? So I think we solved this one as well. That was the first problem of the day. If you take an a triangle that has angle side angle, you can solve that. Um, so there's only one triangle that you can possibly have if you fix two angles and the side length between them. So illustratively, fix a triangle or fix a uh, Fix a side length, so this is this is this can't change. And then we'll fix an angle there, and we'll fix an angle there. So this is fixed, this is fixed. They can't change. And likewise, this side cannot change. So if we continue this out, and continue this out, right? Sort of in both directions, we could even think of doing that. How many possible triangles can we get? Well, just one. Because these two points, or these two rays, have only one possible intersection, which is determined by both angles and the side length. This is exactly the situation uh, that you are using right now as you look at the screen. You've got two eyes that are a distance apart and you are looking at a point on the screen at every time at every moment in time and a human's ability to perceive depth is something that is learned uh, and it has some basic instinctual uh, capabilities as well but this is exactly the situation um, that you learn to determine depth. So this distance d, your brain sort of sort of automatically can can determine how far away something is because of this triangle's single solution. Okay, so that that's why angle side angle uh, is solvable, and why uh, and how you can sort of compute things naturally and really with a calculator. Uh, side angle side. So we've got a side. Okay, and then we'll we'll fix this length. And then we'll 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 fix an angle. So I'll I'll just draw a short side here. And we fix this angle. This can't change. And then we extend this short side out to a fixed length, so some length that we predetermine. So this is a different length. So this can't change and this can't change, and neither can the angle. So I need to add in the third side. Is there a single triangle that we form here? Are there multiple triangles that we could form here with different with a different side length perhaps or these two angles being different the answer is that there's just one triangle 
and it's formed by connecting these two edges. Because of this length and this length and that angle, the length of this side is fixed. And once you get into that side, side, side situation, you're only working with one triangle and one triangle only. So the ambiguous case is side, side, angle, and that's the usual uh, description of it. So I'll illustrate it, and then we've got time to, to do a real example of it. So in the side, side, angle, we know two sides. So here's one, here's another, and we know an angle. So let's say that we know this angle here. So if I extend out here and construct this, so we know side A, we know side B, and we know angle B. Are there multiple triangles that we can get here? The answer is yes, there are multiple triangles. Now what are they? Uh, so this this is this is definitely a, a definitely a harder problem to consider or think about, but here it is. Uh, let me actually let me accentuate this just a little bit more. I need to if I were to draw it right now, it'd be so thin it wouldn't really work. So let me say this is side B. So it turns out, if you attempted to form a different triangle with just these three values fixed, this angle over here, this side, and this side, you can actually sort of swing the side opposite the known angle. You can swing it in towards the angle. Right? It would just follow this, you know, this, this end point would just follow a circular path until it intersected back again right so we don't know how long this side is and we're asking is that side fixed in length or are there two possibilities or multiple possibilities um, so the answer is no there's there's multiple possibilities in this case because this is still as long as this side was this angle hasn't changed and this side length didn't change. Okay. So here's a good example of this. Um, did I? I think I did this one perhaps. Yeah, I think I did that one in the lecture, so I won't. I won't do that one again. Um, let me give you a different one. Okay, here's here's a good one. So in this triangle, this is going to be 20, this is going to be 28, and this is going to be 30 degrees. So because we don't know this angle, we do not have a side angle side. Instead we have a side side angle. So this is the same situation that we had up here. So I'll erase this diagram, and we're going to try and solve this which means we're going to try and find, uh, let's call this one A. We're going to try and find angle A. 
let's call this side B. So we're going to try and find angle B as well. We've got side C, we've got angle C, uh, we've got side A, but we do not have angle A, angle B, or side, C, uh, side B. So in this case, it is possible that by maintaining this length of 20, if we just fix this point here, it is possible that we sort of swing this leg around and it intersects this bottom length again, and that we have possibly two triangles that could be formed. So angle A could be either this one or this one. It's possible. So let's see if we can determine if that is the case. We've got two minutes left. This is going to be fast. Here we go. Um, all right. So first off, we can use the law of sines, right? We've got an angle. We've got uh, we've got an opposite side. So sine of 30 over 20 has to be equal to this ratio, the sine of A over 28. So that's just straight straight away from the law of sines. So we can solve for sine of A, and that's equal to sine of 30, which is root 3 over 2 divided by 20. So that's root 3 over 40 times 28. So sine of 30 is root 3 over 2. Divide that by 20, you get root 3 over 40 times 28. Now, to find angle A, you just take the inverse of that. So 28 times root 3 and we've got a problem. So this gives us 1 point two one. This is a problem. Why is this a problem? Let me just double check make sure I didn't uh, make a calculator mistake. Wouldn't that be great if I did? Yeah, yeah, okay, I don't think I made one. Why is this a problem? What is the inverse sign of a number bigger than one? Oh, let's go back to our unit circle. The sign tells you the y-coordinate, doesn't it? And on the unit circle, the y-coordinate cannot exceed 1. So what's this angle for 1.21? <laughs> it doesn't exist. What does that mean in terms of this triangle up here? What that means is if you fix this side at 28 and this side at 20 and then you force this angle to be 30 degrees it means that no matter how you swing this side either to the left or to the right it doesn't matter how you swing it it will never touch this side over here there's no triangle that gives us this relationship Okay, so side side angle is kind of this really bad case where you could have possibly no triangle that satisfies this entire thing. You could also have just one triangle that satisfies it, and you could also have two triangles that satisfy it. And when you run into situations like this, uh, we're in the situation where there's no triangle.
uh, unless I made a mistake, uh, sine of 30, maybe y'all should have called me out on this. You should have your values memorized. I think this is one half. This is not root three over two. Da. Okay, no, this is this works. So we're, we're over time, two minutes. This should be one over 20, oh, one over 40, which is 28 over 40. Ah. Oh. Man, doing math in front of people is so embarrassing sometimes. Inverse of 0.7, we can do that. So I get a 49 degree angle. 49.4 degrees. So that could be A. So either we have an acute angle of 49, or alternatively, we could have this angle over here, which is, what is that one? Uh, that's going to be 180 minus 49.4, so 130. Point six. Yeah. Uh, so that those are the two possibilities. Okay. So again, I miss miss stated. This is root three over two. It's one half. Which gives us this. Which gives us this. Which gives us this. Okay. So in this case, we have two situations, two possible triangles. We can still solve either, uh, and we don't have a, a contradiction here either. 130.6 plus 30 is not bigger than 180, so this one this one is allowed. Okay. Uh, so, but that's we're now four over. So I'll let you go. Um, thanks for coming today. If you're here, um, just based on those questions. Um, I, I can tell we need to do more of these problems because uh, yeah, in both those poll questions, it really you really should um, just like from doing a few of these problems, um, you should be able to look back and think to yourself, hey, you know, could I solve that triangle? Um, and, and it should be a pretty pretty simple answer of like, yeah, I could solve that, or no, I can't solve that. Um, right, and and with the sort of conceptual reasoning that I was doing before by like drawing a couple line segments and asking, you know, can I solve this? Does you know, can I make other triangles which have this relationship or not? You should be able to do that, and that's what you should do when trying to figure that sort of thing out. Uh, yes, it was Jay. Uh, I don't use. I don't use um, I don't use Zoom's recording thing. Uh, I haven't used it since the beginning of the class. Um, but so I'll, I'll if you if you need to go, I'll talk to you later. Otherwise, I'll keep answering this question for Jay. Um, so thanks for coming. I hope this helps. If you have any questions on on uh, the final upcoming or something else, then just shoot me an email or come to office hours tomorrow. Okay. You're welcome. Um, but Jay, yeah, I, I haven't used the Zoom recording feature in a long time because um, number one, it records it records this little box uh, that you can see where it shows everybody's names. In addition, it also records um, everybody's images and. Uh, just out of respect for, for your privacy. I didn't want to be um, displaying that in a public forum without without you explicitly saying that you were okay with it. Okay. Yeah, so I switched to an alternative recording system and I've been using that ever since. Okay, so it's just my beautiful face that gets posted to the internet. <laughs> but the whole video obviously gets up too, so, so okay. Well, I will see you later then, unless you have questions. Uh, Shingy, did you have a question? Or Giselle? Or Yashia? Otherwise, I'll just assume that you're away from your keyboards.
or maybe you're just still in shock from me thinking that sine of 30 degrees was root 3 over 2. That's probably more likely. I tried to talk you down. I knew it was, I knew it was one half. I corrected that. Okay, well, I'm going to end the meeting. So thank you for coming, uh, and I, uh, I hope that helped. If you, if you have any other questions, just please send me an email, okay? Okay, I'll talk to you later.